Can you fish streamers on a floating fly line? Hold on, here we go. That's like butter. Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our fly fishing tutorials. As always, friends, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate your support of Mad River Outfitters and everything we do. Uh, be sure to subscribe. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. And hit that like button. That just makes us feel good. So today I want to talk about small streamers. Small streamers. Nothing big. You know, I think there's been uh, quite a bit of misconception and certainly not on purpose. And that always tends to happen. And not a problem, but we've had a lot of questions recently um, uh, related to uh, a lot of our recent videos, maybe even in the past year. If you haven't been watching along, I'm sure there will be some links here or there's links down in the description as always below me. We've done a lot of talking about, of course, Kelly Gallup, about modern streamers for trophy trout and about throwing big articulated streamers on sinking lines. And we've had a lot of people chiming in, asking questions as per whether, number one, they can fish a streamer on a floating fly line, and then also asking questions about some smaller flies that you might throw on a four weight or a five weight even, or six weight. Um, yes, we typically, um, just like Kelly taught us, we're throwing big articulated streamers on seven weight and eight weight rods. But that doesn't mean that you can't throw streamers on a lighter rod, like a four weight, a five weight, or a six weight. And first of all, before we start, um, as you all know, I love books. Yes, I love books and stickers. I love stickers. Stickers are really cool. But anyway, I love books. <clears throat> and uh, George Daniel, if you don't know who he is, you need to. George is one of the most highly intelligent, highly educated instructors in the fly fishing business today. He's written several, several fantastic books. Uh, I think he's Team USA, uh, Fly Fishing. Um, George is, is just a brilliant, brilliant author and angler. And he wrote a book a few years back called Strip Set. And this is just like Kelly's Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout. This is a must read also, and we'll give you some different perspectives, a little bit different approach than Kelly. <clears throat> and one of the things that George talks about in here, which kind of struck me and kind of brought me back to where I started to a certain extent, was George talked about the fact that there's sometimes that fish don't always want the largest meal. And maybe, just maybe when you go fishing, you don't necessarily need a trophy trout or you don't need to catch the biggest trout in the stream. Heck, you just want to catch some fish. And maybe you don't yet have a sink tip fly line and you've just got a floating fly line. Well, uh, we're going to give you some information here on doing that. And first and foremost, let's talk about the lines. And to be honest with you, any weight forward line will work. I mean, for example, the Cortland 444 Peach. The Cortland 444 Peach is truly one of the best fly lines ever created. It's now 50 years old as of this year, and it is still a staple. This thing will do anything you want it to do. You can, I don't care what you fish for, dries, nymphs, bass, streamers, Cortland 444 will do the job. Cortland also makes, and it's also not outrageously expensive, okay, so it's a moderately priced line. Also in that 444 series, they make a line called the Big Shot, and the Big Shot is for throwing some larger flies, weighted flies, uh, maybe even bass bugs and such. So in that 444 series, if you wanted to get a dedicated specific line for throwing streamers, have a look at the Cortland 40, 444 Big Shot, and it's not outrageously expensive. But of course, there are some specialty floating fly lines that are designed for throwing streamers. And yes, although Kelly is 
um, kind of the king of throwing streamers on sinking lines. He also does make a floating fly line. This is through Airflow. It's the uh, Gallops streamer floating line from Airflow. And then of course you've got the Rio Predator. And then Cortland does make an official floating streamer line that um, you will see from the taper. If we get up close on that taper there, it has a very aggressive, very aggressive head designed for throwing big, heavy weighted flies. So that's the Cortland streamer line. And there's, there's others as well, but those are some of the favorites that we sell here at Mad River Outfitters. So you can absolutely throw streamers on floating fly lines. And I do from time to time. Um, and we're going to pull out the whiteboard and I just want you to understand the mechanics of how a streamer is going to behave on a floating fly line. And then we'll take a look at the leaders. One of the other misconceptions is, uh, yes, when we're fishing sinking lines, we typically go with a four to five foot leader. And I think a lot of folks thought that we were saying you should go with a four to five foot leader anytime you're fishing streamers and that's not the case. Okay, you're going to fish a longer standard style leader off of your floating fly line. Okay, and you may be adding split shot to that as well. So I'll talk about those on the whiteboard and I'll also give you a simple uh, leader formula. But let's take a look at some of my favorite smaller streamers. Uh, of course, um, you know, classics like the Muddler Minnow. I mean, no more classic streamer than a muddler minnow, which was originally designed to imitate a small sculpin. And, uh, you know, here in Ohio on the Mad River, our fish love to eat inch and a half to two inch streamers, especially, or, or excuse me, sculpins early in the season. And a muddler minnow still does a great job. And then of course, um, the, the classic, probably the most popular fly of all time. It's on your list of top five trout flies to have in your box is definitely a woolly bugger. And, you know, we always say that um, you, people say, well, what color woolly bugger? And well, you should have them all, but the first one you should own should be a black woolly bugger. But you may branch out a little bit um, and try some different types of buggers. I mean, for example, this is a little different color scheme. I think we call this the grizzly bugger. Just a little different color scheme. How about the strawberry, strawberry blonde? I think that is called. And that's uh, just a really different configuration, color configuration on a woolly bugger. And it's wildly popular. We sell, we sell tons of those here in the shop. And then here's a, a variation on that. This is one of my favorite steelhead flies, believe it or not. And this is called a glass bugger. And instead of the traditional chenille body, you've got these glass beads. And man, that thing just glows in the water. It's got that little bit of red, which always gets their attention. And uh, we all know that white works for steelhead. So uh, for those of you that like to fish the white zonkers for steelhead, the glass bugger is definitely worth a try. Um, <clears throat> and then staying in the vein of the woolly buggers, here's a, a big, gaudy, heavy uh, cone head a woolly bugger that's called the autumn splendor and that's a great fly for bigger fish and we also use this a lot for smallmouth and then uh, a legendary smallmouth bass fly the tequili which is basically a variation on a woolly bugger but the tequili especially boy i understand that up in minnesota wisconsin we sell tons of these Tequilis, and it's a legendary smallmouth fly up on the Mississippi and tributaries to the Mississippi. So that's a, a smallmouth killer right there. Um, a couple of other classics uh, that you should never be without, and that is first and foremost, a gray ghost. Uh, a gray ghost is just a, a classic old fashioned streamer, but it absolutely belongs in your box, uh, especially when fish are, are crashing um, sh uh, shad or chubs or smaller, or even dace in the shallows, in the clear shallows along the edges of a stream. A uh, 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 gray ghost is a must have. And then one of my favorites, all time favorite, 
streamers. Uh, in fact, in my original book, Fly Fisher's Guide to the Mad River, I named this as uh, my top streamer for fishing the Mad River here in Ohio, and that is the Olive Matuka. Okay, and I love the ones that are tied out of the hen uh, saddle feathers as opposed to the uh, rooster feathers, as opposed to neck hackle. Um, but that's kind of how I've always tied them and that's how we sell them here at the shop. But then some of my other favorite, call them smaller streamers that you can fish on a four weight, five weight, six weight. Um, first and foremost, this is called the skittish smolt. The skittish smolt, you can look that up on our website or I'm sure there's a link down below me. And it comes in this olive or emerald shiner pattern. Again, a killer, killer steelhead fly. This one in the olive or the uh, emerald shiner coloration, this is absolutely deadly on steelhead, especially early in the season when they're just coming in out of the lake in the fall and they will slam a stripped fly or a swung fly and then also available in the gray, which imitates a lot of your shad and shiners, but just a flashy, it's got the cone head on it. Uh, one of my favorite kind of more modern streamers. And then uh, we get to Kelly Gallup. Yes, Kelly does make some smaller streamers. And of course they're top notch and some of our favorites. This one's called the trick or treat and it's just uh, god awful gobs of marabou and some rubber legs on a hook but you get that thing wet and watch what it does in the water that's a fantastic uh, little fly and uh, the smoke wagon the smoke wagon is absolutely it, basically it's a single hook smaller version of his legendary barely legal it's tied very similarly to a barely legal it's it's basically the back end of a barely legal, okay? <clears throat> this is a, gr a fantastic fly. Again, uh, if you're fishing a floating line and the fish are looking for something smaller, the other thing you can do with this fly in particular, you can do it with any of them, but this fly especially works great as a trailer. If you're fishing a bigger fly like this big bugger, okay, and you want a second fly, which is something that we do pretty often. You can trail it behind, just tie some tippet to the bend of the hook and tie this fly on behind it and you've got two flies instead of one. Of course, I love Gallup's Barely Legal. Uh, again, one of my favorites for six weight, seven weight. Uh, but he also makes a fly called the Laser Legal and it's tied with laser dub. It's quite a bit smaller and it's not nearly as heavy. And with the right leader and, and a fly line designed for throwing heavier flies, you can easily throw this on a four weight or a five weight, a six weight, no problem. And the laser legal, it is articulated, okay? But it's still as light as a feather, tied with Senyo's laser dub and some feathers. Uh, but the laser legal and our little teeny articulated fly uh, gets my vote as top small streamer, uh, top small modern streamer. I would say, of course, a woolly bugger or the gray ghost. The, uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to fish these gray ghosts all the time. Uh, okay, it's a tie. Olive Matuka and a gray ghost. Oh, okay, it's, oh, I love them all. And they'll all catch fish if you take them out and take them for a swim. But uh, as George Daniel says in Strip Set, um, they're not always looking for the biggest fly out there. And, you know, again, if you just want to catch some smaller fish, you don't mind catching some 12, 14, 16 inch fish, throwing a smaller fly might be the answer and there's nothing wrong with it. And it can be done, of course, with a floating fly line. So let's wrap this up. Let's pull out the whiteboard and I'll show you a little bit just about the ramifications of fishing these smaller flies on a floating fly line. And then I'll give you a quick and simple leader formula for your floating fly lines. Okay, so you remember back to all of our videos on sinking and sink tip fly lines and we talked about leaders of four to five foot. Well, with a floating fly line, you wanna go a bit longer. 
And really my favorite length for a streamer leader is about seven and a half foot. Um, so you can certainly buy packaged leaders, especially for a four weight, five weight, or six weight. No big deal, but um, you know, I, I usually stick with seven and a half, but again, if you think you're fishing for spooky fish or you're fishing in really shallow, clear water, you may go up to a nine footer. Um, one note, do not buy bass leaders or streamer leaders, okay? The butt sections on those are going to be way too thick and way too stiff for your four weight and five weight. And if you remember correctly, a good leader starts in the butt, right? Always remember that a good leader starts in the butt. And if you take that, that really thick, I mean, a lot of your bass leaders, they might be 24, 26,000 stiff mono. That's what I use for my 11 weight fly rod or our 10 weight or an 11 weight fly rod. And it's just unbelievable, quite frankly, that some of these companies, they, they just make these leaders wrong. But that's a whole book and a whole different subject that, uh, that is, by the way, uh, we will be talking about. But um, so I would just, the ones I really like for streamers in particular are these Cortland nylons. Um, the Rio Power Flex are, are good as well. Um, a lot of your trout type leaders, say Orvis Super Strong, Rio Supple Flex, those are gonna be more for dry flies or nymph fishing. This Cortland nylon is a little bit stiffer and uh, really does a fine job. And of course, you're gonna be tapered down to 0X, 1X. All of the flies I've shown you here, uh, we're gonna throw those on 0X or 1X. I'm not gonna throw any of those flies on 2X. Uh, it's just too thin for the size of the fly for split shot and to absorb the aggressive hits that you may get out of streamers. But if you were to build your own leaders for streamers, okay, let's say that you had a dedicated streamer line, okay, and let's say it's a five weight, for example. Of course, I would cut off the loop, which is the first thing, almost first thing I always do um, with a dedicated fly line. If I know that I'm only gonna be throwing streamers, I would cut off the loop and I'm going to snell or nail knot a butt section. In this case, we're gonna use Cortland monofilament leader material. I also use Maxima Clear for a lot of my contact fly fishing, which is what streamer fishing is. Uh, but of course, here we are in the spring of 2022 and supply chain issues and Maxima can be very hard to find. We hope that corrects uh, at some point in the future. For, so for right now, we're talking about Cortland Leader Mono because you can get it, okay? So the proper butt section, as we have found here at Matter of Outfitters, for your average five weight is gonna be the 18 thousandths in the Cortland Leader material, okay? So let me draw that on the board. So for a five weight, and it, this usually works for a six weight, also, not a problem. So for a five weight, I'm using 0.018 thousandths of the Cortland Leader Mono. If you're using Maxima Clear, Maxima Clear is stiffer. So you would go down to 17 thousandths, okay? A lot of people think that I'm trying to match the diameter of the tip of my fly line and the diameter of the butt section of the leader, and it's not the case. It's actually the mass which is a combination of the stiffness and the diameter, okay? So, um, and of course, as you know, it has nothing to do with pound test. I mean, this 18 thousandths, if it's a good brand, it might be 30 pound. If it's an okay brand, it might be 20 pound. If it's a bad brand, it might be 10 pound test. So you cannot go by pound test when building a leader, ever. So, um, <clears throat> the proper butt section diameter. A good leader starts in the butt. Repeat that after me. A, a good, good leader, leader starts in, in the butt. butt. Excellent. Way to go, team. All right. So we're going to get our butt right. <clears throat> I'm going to usually start off with a four foot butt section. Okay. So we know that my butt is 18 thousandths. Okay. That's dictated by the tip of my fly line combined with what brand or stiffness of monofilament I'm using. 
and I'm usually going to go about four foot in that butt section. Okay. And then we're simply going to step it down. We're going to go 18 thousandths. We're going to go 13 thousandths, 12 thousandths and 10 thousandths. Okay. There is my three section butt and mid. And then we're going to use the 10 thousandths for tippet, which is one X. Okay. You could easily use 11 thousandths for your tippet. Okay. So, and the leader formula could not be easier. I'm going to go four foot. I'll go half of that for the next one. I'll go half of that for the next one, which is the 12 thousandths. And then I'll go one to two foot of tippet, which is 10 thousandths, maybe 11 thousandths if it's a heavy fly. Okay. Couldn't be easy. If I'm using Maxima Clear, I think it's 17 thousandths. This is probably going to be, I can go to 15 thousandths and go to 12 thousandths. Okay. The diameters on Maxima Clear are a little bit different than the diameters of Cortland, but it really doesn't matter. Okay. So I've got a six, seven to eight foot leader. Okay. You can easily make this a foot and a half and you've got a seven and a half foot leader. If you do want this leader to be longer, let's say for some reason you wanted a nine foot or a 10 foot leader, just make the butt section five foot and then make this two and a half foot. If you want, it's, it, it's not rocket surgery or it's, it's not that hard. Now let's talk a little bit about the rigging and let's talk a little bit about floating lines themselves. So again, if you're, uh, if you're using loop to loops and you got one fly line that you need to dry fly fish, nymph fish, streamer fish with, you're going to loop to loop a seven and a half foot leader. Uh, don't buy bass leaders. Don't buy streamer leaders. The butt sections are going to be too heavy and you all know that's right. Good. Um, <clears throat> Cortland or Rio Powerflex or some of the things that are not soft like Orvis Super Strong. Um, and then if you're building your own leaders, this Cortland leader material works really well. In fact, I'm, I'm, I like this for both floating lines and sinking lines. We're using it off sinking lines as well. It's just good medium stiffness stuff that does a good job. And you know, four foot butt section, two foot, one foot is your mid sections and then one to two foot of tippet. You want to make it longer, just go a little bit, make it a five foot butt section. Not a big deal. Super easy. Okay. And let's just remember when you're fishing, uh, uh, let's talk about rigging. Okay. If, if I've got a dedicated five weight or six weight, four weight, five weight, six weight streamer line, I'm going to snell. And if you haven't seen us do that, the video is right there or it's up probably down in the description as well. If you can't see that link, um, but I'm going to snell the butt section onto the tip of my fly line. And when I do that, friends, that's, that's probably never going to change. Okay. That will stay there almost for the life of the fly line, because there's no reason for me to cut back into that butt section. And even if I did, I could just add more butt section. It's not that, not that big of a deal. A lot of folks think when I cut my loop and I snell or nail knot uh, a butt section on there that I'm going to have to be doing that like three times a day. And that's not the case. I do it virtually once, sometimes over the winter in January when I'm not really fishing that much, I might redo my snells just for something to do while I'm watching a hockey game or, or, you know, 90 day fiance or something. If you need to add split shot, to a fly. You need to get it down a little bit. Okay. I'm typically going to add split shot about four to six inches up from the fly onto the tippet. Okay. So here's your seven and a half, seven to nine foot leader, whatever it is. And here is your fly and we'll make it a laser legal because that's my, my favorite small fly. I'm going to attach that split shot, usually about four to six inches from the fly. Okay. Remembering that the closer you put weight to a bait, the more effectively it's going to sink it. Okay. Um, in fact, that's a general rule in all the fishing, whether you're halibut fishing 
off of Alaska or you're, you're uh, throwing a plastic worm for largemouth, uh, keeping your weight as close to the bait as possible uh, is, is always the best case scenario. So I like to go four to six inches from the streamer, uh, but let's just remember the differences between fishing with a floating fly line. A floating fly line is gonna float on the surface of the water and your leader is gonna sink as such along with your fly, okay? And maybe you have a little split shot on there. So remember where the pull, every time you go to strip, 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 every time you pull that fly, just remember it's going to kind of come up a little bit and then due to the split shot and the weight of the fly, it'll sink. It may or may not sink back down to its original starting point as you let it sink to where the split shot and the way the fly took it to. So it's going to have kind of a jigging action, which is not necessarily a bad thing, especially when it comes to, especially when it comes to bass fishing. Bass love that kind of action. In certain situations, trout may want it too, panfish, uh, smallmouth. Uh, in fact, Kelly and others have designed flies to specifically do that. Okay, um, and there are situations where you may want that jigging action and you want to fish a streamer on a floating fly line. Now, if you're fishing a sink tip, okay, let's remember that a bait fish flees. How does he flee? He takes the path of least resistance and that's gonna be straight downstream and he's also gonna be moving in a straight line. No self-respecting bait fish that's trying to escape from a predator is going to do this. Okay? So if you're trying to fool the smartest and biggest fish in, in, the, in the pool, you're probably going to want to have a sink tip fly line so that it's below the surface of the water. And that way you get that straighter pull on that fly. And then when you retrieve, it's going like this as opposed to up and down, okay? Now, it's not an exact science. It's not a perfect world, of course. Uh, but And you can go back. Go back and watch our videos. We've got five, six, seven different videos. I'm sure there will be links here or down in the descriptions, and you can watch why we prefer, at least I prefer, to fish unweighted flies on sink tip fly lines um, and it's not so much that it sinks the fly, okay? It's that it helps you to cast those big, heavy, articulated flies. And it also keeps the fly at a certain level in the water column, which can be dictated by you and how much you allow that fly line to sink. So, so there you have it, friends. Hope that clears that up and gives you some new ideas about fish and streamers and uh, inspires you to buy Strip Set, which you should. It's a fantastic book. Um, but yes, streamers, of course, can be fished on floating fly lines and there's occasions where it's very appropriate. You just want to use maybe a longer leader than we do fishing with sinking lines. I like this round seven and a half or eight foot, but you can certainly go up to nine or 10 foot uh, if you're fishing shallow, low, clear water, um, especially, nothing wrong with having a, a nine foot leader. Um, just kind of depends on how heavy the fly is and how, how far you want to keep your brightly colored fly line away from the fish. So uh, certainly you can fish streamers on a four weight, five weight, six weight with a floating line and a long leader. Just add some split shot if you need to get down a little further. And I hope it gives you some new ideas on some flies. So as always, we appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. Stay tuned and go to Mad River Outfitters and pick up some stickers. Oh, and click on this video right here. And then you, when you're done with that, click on this video and then if you're not sick of us yet, you can click on that video. And um, I mean, just keep clicking. Click, 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 